Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Sunlu Filadryer S1 uh, filament dry box. And if you don't know what this is, this is essentially a heated box that you put your 3D printing filament in. Um, and the concept is the box heats up and will effectively dry out the filament or remove um, the moisture content of the filament, which will leave you with better printing results. So we're going to put that to the test today after we unbox the unit, um, load in some filament, and I'll show you a few test prints. And then we'll compare those dried test prints to their counterparts that were undried. And with that being said, let's get started. So I've got it out of the Amazon box. This is the packaging. Looks pretty well done. Go ahead and get it out of the box here and see what it's about. In the box, we've got a user guide. Looks like some pretty simple directions. Temperature reference table. QR code on the back, maybe a slightly more detailed explanation. Teflon tube spares. Not sure what those are for exactly, but must be some kind of consumable. The unit here. Take off. Get out of the bag. Display there. it up and the power supply is heavily zip tied in. You can cut those off but uh, it's got door just closes. There's no latch or anything. It looks like it's got two uh, exits for the filament to come out so you can use it while printing. So you've got the top and then the front here. The front's got a little plug in it right now but I'm assuming you can swap those. Oh, and this is where those little Teflon guys go in these uh, knockouts. Okay, let's get this guy out of here. Okay. Two zip ties might be a little overkill, but that's okay. <coughs> power supply here looks like we are at 48 watts 24 volt output and the plug here is just right on the back Let's go ahead and get it plugged in. So it's all plugged into power now. Go ahead and hit the button. That activates the display, it looks like. This is temperature settings. So it looks like this guy tops out at 55C. If you press and hold this button, it lets you set the time. Let's see how far this goes. Quite far. Well, okay, I'm not sure you would need to dry something for more than 72 hours, but this probably tops out at 99 hours. Not bad. You press and hold that again. 
this shows the current temperature of the box and then this is your set temperature there's 55 so let me go grab a roll of filament and we'll stick it in there so I just got some black PLA plus also made by Sunlu really do like this stuff just gonna set it in there and set the timer I'm gonna go for six hours I live very close to the ocean and so even with PLA I've noticed some uh, kind of defects and I'm thinking it's because of the moisture content of the filament so I'm gonna do a couple of test prints here um, with some different filaments and see um, how the sunlight box improves the prints, if at all. got the entire armada here printed um, let's walk through the experiment so for each of these prints we utilize the same G code um, with the exception of some temperature changes for the PETG and ABS boats uh, as well as the PLA plus the two PLA sets the white and silver use the exact same G code file but every pair use the same g-code file um, for their prints so there should be no alterations in the g-code between you know two boats of the same filament type um, as far as the filament itself goes obviously we used five different types um, we've got a PLA plus uh, from Sunlu this is a PLA that came with the Bebo 3d printer this is a G-Tech PLA, this is a Overture PETG, and this is a Sunlu ABS. So for each of the undried prints, we just ran that filament directly through the printer, no uh, alterations to it. For the dry print, prints, each filament was placed in the Filadryer S1 for six hours at 55 degrees. Um, and I rotated the spool a quarter turn every hour and that was consistent for for all all five different filaments here so I'll bring the camera down and we'll get a closer look at some of the details of these guys um, let's start with the PLA plus so this here is the undried Sunlu PLA plus can see it's a pretty solid print uh, a little bit of stringing in the archway the top looks good the stack looks good these little details here overall pretty solid prints little lump here on the uh, overhang but oh on it all in all not not too shabby the dried version honestly very similar um, slightly less 
um, stringing on the overhangs, the overhang here on the front is a little cleaner, but I mean, overall these prints are, are very similar to one another. And this, this was a relatively new roll of filament, so that kind of makes sense. Not going to be a whole lot of change, you know, uh, in, in moisture content for a, a somewhat new roll. Um, so this was the Bebo PLA that came with the printer. Uh, this is undried, and this is a slightly older roll of filament. You can see we got a little bit of, um, you know, inconsistencies in these archways here where the uh, extruder kind of missed where it was supposed to go um, down here on the front of the boat that overhang is got a noticeable little notch there but again not a terrible print on the dried version though minus this <laughs> layer shift that occurred mid print which I don't think is any has anything to do with the um, filament being dry or not. I think that was just a printing error. Um, this boat is almost perfect. I mean, little bits of misses here on the archways, but everything else is in pristine order here. Probably the biggest um, change we saw was with this GTEC PLA. Now this is the oldest spool of PLA that I own. Um, I bought this, originally I bought a G-Tech 3D printer, ended up having to take it back because just everything was broken on it. Um, but I bought some of this silver PLA, it was the same brand as the printer I bought, I figured it should work well, and I have had nothing but trouble with this. <laughs> um, but as you can see, you know, multiple issues on these front overhangs here. The details are just kind of lumpy and bumpy and then down here on the front is just kind of a disaster. But on the dried version, still not perfect but way better. Um, we've got, you know, kind of a ridge right there again on the front. Um, these little strings here are less noticeable or less profound at least on this guy here still not perfectly crisp details but significantly better and I attribute that entirely to the, the drying um, PETG so you have to excuse the uh, we've got a little bit of black filament <laughs> stuck in there from the last print um, but this is the undried or not dried PETG Benchy and you can see it's got some stringing in between these archways all the way across through this little hole here in the front. The front of the boat has got a little lump, you might not be able to see it on the camera but not too bad. Um, but the stack and the roof look pretty good. On the dried version, you just have a much more crisp model. Um, less stringing in between the archways to almost none, honestly, and it doesn't bridge the entire gap anymore. The front is a little bit cleaner, the sides are nice, top and stack look really good. A little bit of stringing inside of this little box section here behind the, the helm, but ultimately a better print with drier filament and then we get into the ABS which honestly I would have a hard time determining the difference between these two prints the dried one actually has some minor stringing very thin strings in between the um, arches here but I mean nothing that couldn't be cleaned up really quickly they're, they're just little hairs, honestly. These two boats are damn near identical. Um, and, you know, that I think is entirely because ABS does not absorb water nearly as much as a PETG or PLA product would.
So there you have it. That was the initial test of the Sunlu Filadryer S1. Um, overall thoughts on the unit. I think it's solid for the price. However, it would be really nice if it had a fan built into it. And I've seen some mods where people have put like a fan, a blower fan up here and tapped it off of the incoming 24 volt connection. Um, just so it kind of circulates the air. Like I mentioned, I was coming through and rotating the filament a quarter turn every hour, which was kind of annoying if that fan was there to kind of uh, move the air around the chamber a little bit. I think that would be really helpful. Um, there are some other dryers on the market that have those built-in fans for basically the same price, maybe 10 to $20 more, that are probably more, that's probably worth the investment. Um, just because of that added fan. Uh, but overall it worked really well. With the Bebo it's a little tough because the display is on the front and then the uh, two exit holes that you can run the filament out of when you're wanting to print with this um, unit uh, active during the print. I was running it out of this top hole here but then I had to put you know this thing here, the printer sits here and the filament comes up through the middle of the printer so you can't see the display at all when um, when you're printing so I'm thinking I might drill a little hole in the back side here to add, to add an, another outlet and then maybe plug these up with a little bit of silicone or something um, just so I can turn the unit completely around so that from the side I can view the screen while the filament's going up and into the into the printer but yeah, it's a solid unit. Um, there is a S2 version of this, and the reason I got the S1 was because the display is on one of the short sides. On the S2, the display is on the front here, um, and that just didn't really make sense to me. For, for the Bebo, at least, you've got you'd have to turn go completely around the printer and have 360 access in order to see that display, which just doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, but I think that one might have a fan built in, so maybe that's the better option. Overall, I would recommend the unit. I do want to do a more conclusive test where we're actually, you know, taking the filaments that have been out and ex exposed to water, um, weigh those spools, stick them in here for a day or ten hours, whatever it is, um, and then weigh them again to see how much actual water content we're removing from the uh, the system. Um, also possibly getting a little humidity sensor for these so we can see the humidity drop um, as the uh, filament is, is being dried out. Um, so if that's something you guys are interested in, let me know in the comments below and we can definitely take a look at uh, making another video on on that as well. All right, well, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you found it uh, interesting, if nothing else, um, to see the effects of drying of these different filament types. Um, again, if you want me to go into a little deeper dive on this dryer, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to do that. Um, but for now, that's going to be it. So we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, everyone.